it's so freaking hard. You let him hit it raw. You didn't have second thoughts. Now you're a single mom. Now you're a single mom. On my unpaid lunch break, at my new $10 an hour job, I've done had like probably three breakdowns and I, it's just day one. I just feel that $10 an hour, an unpaid lunch break, whole hour unpaid lunch break, whatever. It's just absolute bullshit. It's, it's a daycare. My kids are also here at the daycare. My kid, one of my kids get to, gets to be in my class. She wouldn't nap. No. So we didn't get to play outside today either. I about lost it when I asked, cause I'm training today. And I about lost it when I asked, so do we go outside before nap or after nap? She's like, oh, we may not go outside today. And it's a, it's a beautiful day. It's so pretty outside. For all you daycare workers, I'm just honestly like, I applaud you. Like this has been hard today. I just, I don't even know what to say wanted to do con God. content creation and be an influencer and whatever and uh, you have to have 10,000 followers to get paid and oh my god I have such a fucking long way to go and like, what am I talking about I literally have no choice but to work here I need childcare and I need an income and yes my little $300 a week paycheck it's something you know this one kid was hitting my kid and like i'm new it's my first day so you know i'm kind of like oh no we don't hit whatever i have another teacher in there with me who's training me and it's just so hard to watch like it's just it's like look what i have to put them through for money so if anyone wants to follow me that'd be pretty good that'd be pretty great right now actually because i really don't want to do this anymore it's like it's like can i really not find 300 dollars a week somewhere where I can be at home and not have to take my kids anywhere to get sick, to get hit, all that shit. I really would like to be at home with both of my babies. That's it. I just want to be home with them. How are you? I'm okay. <sighs> Every single case of mass school shootings that have happened in the past several years, the boys are from homes with no fathers. We're having a lot of problems in our society as a result of the breakdown of the family. This is a direct uh, reflection of the breakdown of the family. 52% of women are single. Being strong and independent and having over half of women not being able to pair bond and marry and live a life with a man is not a good thing. No more families. What do we do? How does a society grow? How does a society worth anything if there's no more families? 45% of American children are born to unwed mothers. Most children that come from a single mother home, just from, you know, their mother, they have so many more problems. They're more obese. They're more, they have more attention deficit disorders. They do worse in school. Their incarceration is higher. Nobody talks about how lonely it can be being a single mum, even though we're never truly alone because we have our babies. For me, it hits at night time. The kids have gone to bed. I'm eating dinner, watching TV, alone with my thoughts. Just missing having adult conversations, to cuddle at night, or even just to tell about your day. We can have so many amazing people around us, but still feel alone. Today's article is titled, Single Father Households Do Vastly Better Than Single Mother. Here's the real reason why. And the subtitle is, The consensus is, mothers typically make better parents than fathers, yet single fathers do better than single mothers. Here is why. We in the manosphere knew single fathers were better. It's just the feminist, gynocentric society that assumes women are better parents, mostly so they can divorce grape men. I'm sure you guys know what I mean by grape. That's the main reason the anti-family court gives women the custody of the kids 95% of the time. So they can make a man a child support slave for 18 years. Let's get into it. Before we go any further with the video, let me share the comment of the day. 
Shout out to Grey Walker Join Third Party, who said, This is absolutely hysterical. A sex strike? Who's the one that's going to tell them that 80% of men won't even notice? That's a fact. These good men aren't even looking in the direction of these feminists. So, brother, please don't forget to reach out to my email to claim your five bucks. As always, guys, I'ma pick one comment from each video. It could be the funniest, the most liked, or one that moved me, so don't forget to leave a comment and you could be the very next winner. So be sure to hit that like and sub button as the sport means everything to me for the channel. So now, let's get right back to the video. It's extraordinary well documented how much of a disadvantage children from single mother households have over children whose parents remain together. But less well documented is how much of a disadvantage they have over single father households. For example, studies have found that children from single mother households are five times more likely to commit suicide than children from both unbroken households and single father households, nine times more likely to drop out of high school, ten times more likely to abuse chemical substances, 14 times more likely to violate another person, 20 times more likely to end up in prison, and 32 times more likely to run away from home. Single moms are a scourge on society. Most of the problems come from them and their spawn. You get rid of all the single moms, that is, the ones who chose to be single, and at least 95% of all crimes would disappear from society. Back to the article. The list does not stop there. Single mother households also account for 70% of all teen pregnancies, 70% of all child murders, and they account for the majority of filicide cases, which means, yes, a child living in a single mother household is the most likely to be murdered by their parent. Feminists are taking big L's from this article. Remember when they tried a moment called the futurist feminism? Well, show them this stat the next time they claim society needs women leaders or women don't need no men. Continuing with the article. Most at this point will probably think that the stepfather is the main killer and reason. However, studies have found this to be false and that stepparents are no more likely to kill children than their biological counterparts. This means inevitably that single mothers are on average the biggest killers of children. Some studies even show that mothers are the biggest killers of children overall. Though, it should be noted that others show it to be fathers, while others show that men and women are equally as likely to kill their children. There are far more women who end kids' lives than men, and we're not even talking about abortion. As you'll see a bunch of news stories of moms, and especially single moms killing their kids for various reasons. Some even do it, just so they can live the single thought life again. And sadly, many do it when they miraculously lose custody battles to the father. Back to the article. Regardless of the dynamics of this complex point, all of this seems crazy considering the consensus is mothers make better parents on average than fathers, yet the data seemingly says otherwise. In fact, the only disadvantage to living with just your father rather than both of your parents appears to be that you are more likely to be promiscuous in adulthood, which isn't even a problem. I mean, it's crazy, and as a mother, it makes no sense to me, mainly because it all seems to imply that men don't need women to raise children well, but women need men. The question is, what gives? Have we all got it wrong and fathers are actually the better parents? The answer is no, especially in the West when most modern women don't even do mother duties anyways. They're an extra mouth to feed and a massive headache. What's the point of having a so-called mother if she'd rather do a meaningless corporate job than raise her own kids? Modern women don't want to cook and clean because it's beneath them but they'll take a minimum wage job cleaning toilets or flipping burgers just to call themselves strong and independent. Back to the article. Many argue economics must be the difference. They are wrong. It's popular to say that because single mothers are more likely to be in poverty, it must be economic differences that explain the data. However, studies have found that economics does not explain it. It's the same story even if the single mother is not in poverty. More women are graduating college and more women are working jobs, and still, they're much more poor than men. So much for equality. Continuing with the article. It seems poverty largely explains the typical cognitive attainment deficit for children from single mothers, but it doesn't explain the differences in emotional outcomes, nor all the other issues. 
I was actually surprised by this, and so I went to my kid's school. They were at a rather expensive private school. And I asked the teachers, and they told me that more often than not, the children that cause the most problems and have the most problems tend to come from single mother households. It's because the father adds discipline and order. The mothers are usually overwhelmed, as their version of order is appeasing the kids. It's a short-term solution, but that makes the kids become super entitled and spoiled and out of control because you have to bribe them to behave normal. While a dad will get the belt if he needed, and eventually they'll learn real quick how to act. Continuing, I asked specifically if they ever noticed the same problem from single father households. They highlighted how single father households were much rarer, but that they did not notice the same problems. My partner works at a university and he tells me the same story. When it comes to the students, the ones he normally has the most trouble with, and the ones most likely to drop out and skip lectures, come from, you guessed it, single mother households. And guess who gets most of the scholarships? Ones that come from single mom homes. It's not the most qualified candidate, but the one with the biggest sob story. And this goes to show that single moms still fail even after society gives them special treatment. Back to the article. However, even though single father households are rarer, he has not ever noticed the same problem from such households. Further issues with the economic link can be found by looking specifically at the UK. The UK has been lauded for its success in reducing single mother poverty, and yet that reduction has not coincided with an improvement in outcomes for the children, nor has greater acceptance of single mother households. Also, improving education among single mothers doesn't seem to be changing things in terms of outcomes, with single mothers much more likely to have good educations now than they used to, but men more likely to be doing worse. Education today is indoctrinating girls into feminism, it's government brainwashing centers, it gives them a sense of entitlement and overvalues their self-worth, which makes them think they're important to society just because they got a gender studies degree. For example, 20% of single fathers don't have high school diplomas versus only 15% of single mothers, and single mothers are now more likely to be university educated and by a decent amount. You don't need education to be successful anymore. A kid can learn more working at McDonald's than these feminists ran schools that teach boys how to pretend to be girls. Back to the article. But if it's not economics, acceptance, or education, what is it? Are men on average just better at single parenthood? The devil is in the detail, and to understand what is going on, we must look at the details. That is, we must break down the data. It would be easy to conclude resoundingly that fathers are just on average better at single parenthood. It would even be easy to argue that men are perhaps the more important parent. I've heard arguments to this tune before, with the idea being that because this is a more of a man's world, that is, full of direct conflict and ruthless competition, men are better at preparing children to handle such environments which makes them more important as parents, at least on average. Yeah, men aren't giving out participation trophies, it's the feminists who want their kid to feel special no matter what, which sets them up to fail because they expect to be rewarded by not being the best. In the real world, sometimes even being the best doesn't get the reward. This is another reason why these kids are turning to cream because they've never dealt with overcoming failure. Continuing, However, it is just not as simple as that. This is because despite economics seemingly not being the factor, the data comparing single father households to single mother is heavily distorted by several other factors. Factors which explain why the data shows what it does, and which shows that it's not because men make better single parents or are the more important influence. Economics does make a massive difference as most single fathers are more well-off financially than single mothers. Because many single mothers have a negative net worth, as in, if it wasn't for welfare or every other taxpayer handout, along with child support and alimony, these single moms would be on the streets. These so-called strong, independent, and brave women who claim they don't need no man are actually alive because of other men's money. Continuing with the article, what's really going on? Firstly, it is much easier on average for a single father to fill his children's lives with strong and positive female influences than it is for a single mother to fill her children's with strong and positive male influences. Whether it be the father's mother getting stuck in, whether it be the father's sister stepping in, whether it be a teacher, or which there are many options mainly because female teachers greatly outnumber male teachers, whether it be all of the latter and more, the options available to men are just more prevalent, willing, and accessible. These so-called positive female influences like teachers aren't. They promote feminism and today's classroom barely teach math or reading. 
there's nothing that can replace a real mom. Someone who cooks and cleans the house, along with provide nurturing love to the kids. And because most modern women don't want to be moms, but career women, their own kids never experience that mom experience, so might as well be raised by female teachers or any other modern woman. Back to the article. This matters because there is simply no escaping it. Children benefit greatly from having an equal number of positive male and female influences in their lives. Yet, women struggle more to create this world for their children after a breakup than men. Many struggle to create this world even when they are still with their man. This is because of many reasons. Most single moms are poor and are desperate to get any man to help out. Also, great men are much less likely to raise someone else's kids because they'd be raising their own kids. Continuing with the article. This puts single mothers at a disadvantage compared to single fathers, and this disadvantage is further exacerbated due to the romantic front. Here is why. Not only do single mothers struggle to find positive male influences in the wider world, they struggle to find them in the romantic world as well. This is because women are far happier to take on a man with children than men are to take on a woman with children. A man with children is the ultimate pre-selection because another woman valued the man so much they decided to pass on his genes. That's much more of a commitment than a marriage because that's an 18-year commitment while a single mother is used goods and a leftover. Back to the article. I would even go as far as saying that women often find men with children more attractive than their childless counterparts. I know I always have. Whereas men typically find women with children less attractive. That is, they don't want to take on the responsibility of those children. I just made the point and the author verified it. Skipping some parts. To make matters worse, the single mother romantic disadvantage doesn't stop there. I spoke to a friend of mine who works in child psychology and he told me that in his experience, children tend to find it much easier to countenance a father entering a romantic relationship than a mother simply because we tend to want our mothers all to ourselves. Basically what she said was, kids are cock blockers. This is another reason why dating single moms is such a bad idea, especially living with them. You'll never really be seen as the father, just the mom's boyfriend who's a placeholder. And you'll be reminded that you're not the father when the kids get mad and outright tell you you're not my father. Skipping more. Fathers, though, have less of a problem on this front, at least in comparison. That is likely when Pew Research found that 41% of single fathers in the U.S. are cohabiting with a partner versus only 16% of single mothers. Yup, 41% of single fathers are not technically entirely single fathers versus only 16% of single mothers. This shows that more fathers are thinking of their kids before their own personal feelings of their mother. As in, they're more adult about a breakup. And even more, they're less vindictive and petty, unlike single moms who will end their kids' own lives if it meant they can hurt the father. Skipping more, these female writers need to stop repeating what they've already said. It's like they're getting paid per word count. And the advantages that single fathers have over single mothers don't stop there. There are more. Women are more prone to mental health problems than men. This matters. It's well documented that women are far more likely on average to succumb to stress and mental health problems than men are, with women being nearly twice as likely to suffer depression and other stress-related mental health problems than men. This is because women are getting screwed up by all the men they're screwing. It's making their system go haywire. It's like adding too much paper to the printer, along with all the other drugs. To sum it up, they're a walking lab set. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you'll get five bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video. Till next time.